So from our default layout, we can jump over to the geometry nodes layout and just quickly create a new graph and hold control and just cut this noodle and get started. So now by deselecting, we can press Q, go under cycle node and just begin rolling through every node. One of the new things I wanna go over first is that you can now press S in order to search. So if I wanted to say search for cube, I can type in cube, press enter, and now I'm able to basically go to cube. Another interesting thing about cycle node now is that if you have something selected and you shift click to begin appending nodes, you can now press down F in order to basically flip what you're cycling through. So now we're actually scrolling through what we would be attaching to inputs and we could even shift scroll in order to jump which input we want to connect something to. So in this case, I'm actually looking for integer. And then from here, we can actually connect that to all three of these and set this to something like 24. And let's also connect this to the end just so we see what we have going on. So from here, we can also, you know, once we begin to shift scrolling to jump through, we can also hold control and begin jumping through categories. So let's say we want something very specific. Like for example, I want something under geometry. So we're just going to jump over to geometry where we can locate exactly what we need, which in this case is going to be split edges, but it doesn't appear to be here. So that's where S can come in handy. I could just type in split and we're now on split edges. So we're now going to jump off of split edges and locate what we're going for, which in this case, we're looking for attributes. So I'll just roll backwards until we locate it. But a lot of rolling would be necessary in order to find it just in the long list of nodes that are available. So let us just press S and just type in, let's try it again, A-T-T-R. And that brings us to attribute where we can capture our attribute. We'll change this over to face, change this over to be vector. And by shift jumping off, we can choose what we want to connect to our output, but we can also press F to flip it back. Shift scroll in order to find exactly what we want. In this case, we actually want the position. So position is always right by the normal. Once I see the normal, I know that I'm right by the position. So from here, we can just jump off again and go locate our set position, which, you know, sometimes I'll just scroll until I get tired of it, just press S and just type in set. And we see that that gives us set position. So we just move that over. Let's also go ahead and reconnect this to our output. So now we have our position that's being captured from every face. Then we have our set position. So from here, let's just cycle again, except we're just going to shift, shift jump to the second one. And we are going to press S to search and just type in mix and let's just jump up to color because that's the category that I'm actually looking for. So sometimes you know specifically exactly what you want. In this case, it's only showing me this option. Let's actually look under our ad menu under what we have going on under color. And what we wanted was the mix RGB, but because the outputs have these differentials going on, it's hard to convince them to let the mix show up whenever you're scrolling with the vector. So more on that another time, but let's go ahead and just connect these two. And this is basically the result that I'm going for is basically a dissolving cube. So we cycle in, bringing this up and down, and this is basically our result. So I'm just going to shift, right click, place my cursor, shift A, and we're just going to bring in a sphere, right click and lower the scale of our empty. Select the cube to bring back up our graph, but we'll drag our empty into the node graph. And from here, we're just going to jump off of this, looking for vector math, which is right here. And we will choose distance. And we see that once you go to distance from something like add or multiply, that the output's no longer a vector. So just something to keep in mind, this was something that we aim to resolve in this latest update. So. Let us bring in our face. So now we're calculating the distance between our empty and this one. And let's also set this to relative. I'm not sure if I've been actually doing that in the past properly, but by jumping off of this, we can quickly just locate a math. However, we see that, you know, math is add. 
And let's also change this to be maybe power, not exponent, maybe 1.5. And from here, let us connect this to the factor. And now we have it where whenever we move our empty around, it will scale these faces down to zero. So something very basic, but just one of the ways that I've been kind of just having fun whenever it comes to geometry nodes and testing out the cycle node to attempt to see how it could be faster and what ways it succeeds and also where it falls short. But there's definitely been a lot of improvements that's been done with it for this particular update. And this is just a small example, just kind of showing how you can use it in action to get where you're going. In fact, we are so supportive of the Shift-A menu that we have it part of the Q menu where if you're looking for a very specific note, you can always go in and find your list. In fact, you can always just drop down all nodes if you just want every single node that's available, which is kind of crazy. I see that as being unnecessary. I'm a much bigger fan of just choosing a node, pressing Q, going to cycle node, and even without anything selected, you're able to just basically begin rolling through an entire category of what is being offered. So here we've brought in a map node where we can begin dealing with this in earnest if we want to tighten it up by just mapping the range to be something a little bit smaller, which we probably could have dealt with just by lowering the power, but that's a talk for another day.